Okay, welcome back to another Gibbs adventure. Jim here. I have my daughter Casey helping me film today. So we're going to do a good video. She always tells me. <laughs> so anyways, this is a redneck fur drum. And so what I have here is an old uh, electric dryer. And I've converted it into a fur drum. So the first thing you do is you cut off the big cable in the back. You don't want to have the electric element working. So you have to get rid of that. The motor runs on 110, so you, you uh, cut the big cable off, you find the right wires for the motor, you hook them up to a regular cord like I've done here. So this is just a regular cord, extension cord. So I splice it into the back and uh, I've wired it so that it'll, it'll work. So inside the drum you have to close off any vents. So if you see in the back there. Okay, so what you have to do is seal the inside of the drum. So if you look inside the drum here, there was holes in the back where the air used to pass. You close it off with that aluminum duct tape that you can buy. So this, this stuff has is a two-sided tape. Okay, and you uh, basically you just cut off the pieces that you need, rip off the back tape, okay. And, you, and then you just apply it wherever you need it. It'll, it'll go on pretty, pretty uh, solid and never really comes off. Okay, so this is the right stuff to use. It's a two-sided, uh, one-sided tape, aluminum on one side, and you can, like I said, you just seal up any holes in the drum, and then that way there it becomes a closed drum because you don't want sawdust getting inside of the, uh, of the drum. You want it to be able to be a closed drum and, and turn in there. So once you do that, the mixture that I use, and this is critical, is I buy hardwood sawdust. Don't use sawdust from underneath your, your table saw. You'll hate me because hardwood sawdust, if you look under a microscope, looks like tiny footballs. If you get sawdust from, uh, say, cutting a piece of pine or something, it looks like little hooks and it gets stuck in the fur. So hardwood sawdust is the material to use. Just get a handful here. So you can see how nice and clean it is. I put 12 of these, I put 12 of these inside the drum and I do four beaver at a time. So here's the difference between the clean sawdust and after I've drummed it a few times. You can see how dirty it gets. So after about 12 beaver I change out the sawdust and I put a fresh load of sawdust in. So this is about a one liter uh, container, smaller than a quart. I put 12 of those in there. Once the sawdust is in, I add one of these full of hot water and I mix in soap. So you can use downy, you can use all kinds, but you can, I put in about a whole cup, this measurement size of the soap. I add it to the hot water and I mix it and then I put it in, in the drum with the sawdust and then I start the, saw, the drum for a couple of minutes to mix it all up. After that, I add my beaver in. So my mixture I have in right now is good to go. I, I did a couple of beaver already this morning, but I just want to add in a few more. I don't want to waste the sawdust by putting a fresh load in. But so I, so I take four beavers, I just add them to the, to the drum. Plug it in and away I go. So I drum my beaver for 10 minutes. You don't want to over drum them, you don't want to under drum them. If they're wet, you might have to run them for a couple of more minutes, but generally 10 minutes is what the ticket is, and they're gonna come out nice and clean. And if they were wet or if they had blood on them, it's gonna clean all that up. But the drumming process, all it is, is that it's tumbling. And I'm doing this before I flesh the beaver. If you do flesh beaver, like clean skin beaver in here, you're going to put a layer of sawdust on the flesh side and it's going to be like sandpaper and the graters are going to hate your guts. So don't do it. Try to flush them or if you do, you've got to scrape every piece of sawdust off the skin side because it will stick to it. So I'm doing this, these are rough skin beavers and I'm doing it to clean the fur. So they've been drumming for 10 minutes. I didn't put a switch in. So I just use my, I'm just using my cord to turn it off and on. I 
Okay, so the beavers, like I said, have been in there for like 10 minutes. I give them a shake as I bring them out here. I try to grab them by the nose. Give them a couple of good shakes to knock everything off. People ask, why would you want to drum a beaver? But just shaking them off in the pond helps to get all the mud and dirt off them. But you'd be amazed how much dirt is on a beaver. Okay, so you can see the hardwood sawdust does not stick in the fur. Okay, it sticks to the fat side, so that's why you don't want to drum a flesh beaver. When I flesh it, it helps my flesher hold on to the uh, the fleshing knife hold on to the skin, and it actually fleshes easier for me. But there's no grease running anywhere. It's nice and clean. Okay. So that's a that's a drum beaver. Compared to a beaver that's not drummed. You can see the difference. This one hasn't been drummed yet. This one's been drummed. Two things it does. If they're wet or if they got blood on them, it cleans it up. And the other thing is... With the soap in it, it cleans it and it gives it a lot nicer smell. There's no grease or any extra blood on it. This is, uh, I got one more to pull out. And people will ask me, why would I bother drumming a beaver? Because they don't drum them at the auction. But for me, I'm trying, I'm always trying to strive to give the best possible product that I can. And drumming gives you an edge. You know, as I showed you with the, the one that's drummed and one that's not drummed, it gives you an edge. So, there you go. You can see now how dirty the sawdust is. Again, just give you a comparison. You know, there's the clean stuff and there's the dirty stuff on the floor. So, about every 12 beaver, I decide I changed out the sawdust. After I'm done with the sawdust, I can still use the sawdust when I'm fleshing beaver on my fleshing beam. So I, I even continue to reuse it. So there's my redneck uh, fur drum. And it, like I said, it works pretty good for me. You don't want to have the element working. I want to give credit to the guy that showed me this trick, Danny Charette from New Brunswick. And Danny helped me with the mixture, the right mixture to put in it. Different size sawdust to doing different jobs you want a heavier sawdust for drying things like raccoon and for dr doing things like beaver if you're going to drum martin you would use a finer sawdust so you wouldn't use a heavy sawdust like i'm using so but i'm using this pre skinning or pre boarding and i'm doing it the like i said the auction house doesn't drum beaver but i'm trying to give a as good a product as i can right on